Yo, what's up everybody? Friday, 5 p.m. Although my phone is stuck on 941, so I don't know what the hell. <laughs> I'll have to look at another clock. Five o'clock. Um, yeah, man, got a great drummer on. Here's the new Deftones. There he is. Come on on, babe. Let's get you on here. All right, waiting for Abe coming in, everybody, from Deftones. Woo. Yo, there he is. Hey, what's up there, Tim? How you doing? I'm good, brother. Happy 941 to you. I know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. This never happened. My phone says 941. I'm like, gosh, I got a lot of time left. And I look yeah. at my computer, and it says five. So, okay, here we go. <laughs> I'm kind of living in a little bit of a suspended animation these days, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. Man. So what's how's happening? everything doing, man? Good. I just cracked open, and I got a little double stroke right here. Oh, nice. Hello there, everyone. There you go, everybody. Herbside, I'm drinking the 7-4. Because you're special. Look at you. Because we got the, yeah, the old 7-4 time signature. Nice. Abe's got the double stroke. You can go to uh, herbcider.com, get yourself some cider. Well, man. And sip, and sip on it. How are you, man? Oh, I'm good. good. I've been enjoying the hell out of your new record. Thank you, I man. I got to say, it sounds so good. Now, Killer. did you, you're working with Terry Date on this one? Yeah, so I mean, Terry did our first four albums, um, you know, and, and we went back and we did, a, I think we tried to do a record in about 2008 um, with him as well. You know, he's, he's family. It's not like you, you go away and right. talk, you know, he's, he's family, man. So that's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we got back together this time. He always said, just, you know, if you need anything, just give me a buzz. And we're like, shit, let's call up Terry again, you know, so. So that was, yeah, yeah, a good thing, man. Well, that's cool. It does sound incredible i mean i've been listening i got on uh sorry i'm trying to fix the stand here for the phone all good i got on and was listening to uh some of the old uh the albums before this and i yeah. do notice a sound difference from his and records or from records that he did or just uh no i'm talking let's see so gore right definitely that's somebody else producing right yeah, that was Matt Hyde. Yeah, so definitely. Gore's uh, Matt Hyde. Okay. And uh, what about the... The two, the two prior to that were both uh, Nick, Rask uh, Nick Raskulinix, who is a, a dear, dear buddy as well. Um, right. you know, fun to tell to work with. More, uh, more of a, we call him man who walks with one stick. He's, <laughs> he always, he's just a, uh, he's just an energy ball, you know what I mean? And he, he always has one stick and he's just kind of, pacing around he's like give me a stick and he's just always jamming and really a, yeah he's a i mean you know plays he can play he plays everything man but uh right but you know i mean yeah definitely of course a different sound um different different guy i mean the band is, it sounds like the band but but definitely with terry's with terry i mean we created a lot of our you know our i guess you would say core core sounds or at least develop them i gotta with say him. man his sound the way he the way he it, does he mix as well and engineer yeah, totally. I mean, he's, that's that's where I mean, he, that's where his forte is, man. He's a he's just wants to capture the band, you know what I mean? So, but he's just when it comes time, he just buries his head and you know, and just each channel and each strip and just plucking out the right frequencies, and that's that's where he gets down, you know. He, God, man, it's such a great sound with you guys. I gotta say, there's a there's a darkness to it, you know, yeah. it's, like it's underneath. And the way he uses the effects on the vocals and your your uh, room sound, you know that he it, it's it's not this bright. It, it, there's a there's that I love it. It's like this dark. I don't know what it is, man. He's right. got his tricks, you know. <laughs> yeah, he does. And he's you know what's I mean. He's definitely a less is more uh, type of dude. You know what I mean? He just uh, very minimal. I mean, again, like. Like on, the, on this last record, last album, we we uh, what we, we tracked it at, at Henson, the old A and M down in Hollywood. Oh, you did. Yeah, so killer. You know, I mean, obviously that place is 
you know, it was A&M Records for, what, 50-plus years. And okay. Before that, it was the old Charlie Chaplin studio before, you know. And then, wow. uh, and then Kermit the Frog took it over, so. But that room was Studio B, and that's, I mean, there's been a, a million records done in it, but that was the old Karen Carpenter room. Um, oh. Yeah, so it's got, you know, there's a lot, you know how it is. You go into these studios, man, and, and. I don't, man, because we've always, all of our records are all, well, our first record we did live in a yeah. club, uh, Berkeley Square in Berkeley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. You're from that area, right? So, no, I'm, I'm, and I'm very aware of the record. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes. And then our second one, we actually went into, uh, God, what's the studio? Uh, right there in San Francisco. Um, like different, a, uh, different, different fur. Different fur. Yeah. And then we did it there. And then, yeah, our next album was done at Fantasy Studios, okay. which was, you know, the the biggest, nicest studio. Then after that, all the ones I was involved in, we were all doing it at home, like yeah. in, in a warehouse or, or at Les's house or, totally. you know, and it, it's, it's, for me, I, I do wish we had some history in some of those rooms that Zeppelin or Van Halen or... Yeah. You know, that we had got to do stuff in those rooms, you know? I mean, that's the whole, I mean, that's, you know, I, I, we're, I'm a music, I just, I, I'm a nerd and I love the, his, I love his, I love, I love history and I've loved music history as well. But I mean, just like, um, you know, I always, you know, going into those rooms and trying to, you know, maybe rub your elbow on the wall and get a little bit of mojo off those walls, you know, where oh. crazy shit is. I mean, like uh, we did, we recorded the, at the plant in Sausalito for our third album. Okay. You know, and, and yeah, was, we've, you know. we've mixed we've mixed there. I don't think we ever tracked there. Right. Oh yeah, you guys uh that what was that uh White Pony? Yeah, that was. Um Yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember you guys were out there, right? Mixing. Or did yeah, you we, track we, it there? We tracked it there. We were living on the house boats up in Sausalito and you know, we we're having really? the time of our lives. We were in the mid twenties, you know, living living Oh yeah. But then yeah, then we went down to LA to mix that too. But um I have a question though. Um Selling the, seeds, uh, selling the seeds of cheese was that done in were the drums done in an old studio like a, a like a old See, warehouse the cheese were done in fantasy in berkeley okay and i lived like a block away right there on dwight way right okay and i used to walk over there and yeah that that was that was the interesting story i had that that pork pie drum set you know right. it was custom made and me and lester sitting there trying to figure out how to set it up at the studio like and then Zildjian fortunately sent me all kinds of symbols and I we literally were just like throwing stuff together it was kind of it was kind of stupid to do like you know like I'm sitting on this kit like I'd never really gotten comfortable with and right we did season cheese on that but it sounded really good you well know? I don't I mean stupid is that's all you know whatever you can say what you want but I mean, so check this out. Remember when? So I, I used to watch you guys at Cattle Club and Bay and Stone right. and Omni and everywhere you could play. You know, all the. I mean, because we played. We were after you guys, obviously, but we can You know, we, we played every single club you can imagine in that area. Right. But um, when you the first time I ever saw you guys was at Cattle Club in in Sacto, and it was just all fucking right. blown away. But you, I mean, you're old. You had the, that old Ludwig kit with like, yeah, like a butcher a, block kit. Yeah, that was a, taped together. Um, you know. I mean, I was just enamored, and I, I could see. I mean, everything you know, the rotor toms too, but everything about it was the fucking electrical tape and shit was holding it together. You had the uh, oh yeah, the uh, Aquarian Aquarian springs on the on the Wuhan. Oh those yeah, old, those I, old I Aquarian I, springs. I think I saw that on uh, because you know I used it because Neil Peart used that Wuhan. Yeah. Oh my god. And I tell you, man, that's gotta be one of the best Chinese symbols I've ever, ever. That China effect. It's it's sharp, yeah. but it's quick. It dies out quick. Right. Everyone now makes them really big and loud, and it's like, ugh, it's yeah. too much for me now. No, I, I understand. I, I get but, it. Now. But yeah, that was the Neil Peart thing, and I was trying to get that spring on it. Yeah. But just for everyone to know, it was like a little, it was like a, a holder for the symbol, and the symbol would stick on top, and it, it was on a spring. So when you hit it, the symbol would go. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. And it kind of had a cool, I mean, you're watching it, well, it sort of had a look to it too, but also I think it helped maybe me, you know, it obviously saved the symbol a bit too, um, before the, the uh, time of support of companies. Yeah. Thank God, you know what I mean? Shit's yeah. expensive, man. Shit's expensive. Oh, I know. I know. So, yeah. 
But yeah, those are the days I had to want that. That was the best way I could kind of recreate my Neil Perk kits. Yeah. Uh, you know, because I was always trying to imitate him. I, that's just what that's just was my guy, you know, and so I was always trying to do imitate him. And so, you know, the Roto Tom right here next to my little five piece kit gave me that extra sound I could get. And, right. You know, but for, for a nice price, too. You can, I mean, like, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just amazing. Um, so that's, I do, that's cool, I do, man, that you were there. Oh, man, I was there. I was there. Definitely. Man. I was 15 years old. Oh, wow. um, but I got stuck on this. I used to live up in Mendocino. I was from Sacto, but I, I went, I moved back to Sac, and I grew up in, in, in Mendo up on the coast. But oh, I, yeah. um, I, I took a Greyhound one summer to go up there and visit my, my buddies for the, for, the, uh, for the summer, or you know, a couple weeks, whatever. And I ended up, he, he gave me stuck on this on cassette off, off, off the album, you know, off the vinyl, and I just all the way back. Yeah, it took like, what, it's a couple hundred miles, but it took like 50 hours to get back. You have to stop at every town, you know, on 128, like just like the longest trip. Don't take a Greyhound on, on 128, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but I was just rocking that record. So, and that started a whole, just a whole, you know, I mean, that started my path on you on, and, and, and it was just a magical time in right. a lot of reasons. Well, it, turn, it music, turns yeah. out, man, I've, I've totally fell in love with you guys. I just, I just, the way, the way it, you guys put everything together, it just sounds so great, you know, with, with the way you lay your group, your group. And that's, what's interesting too. People got to know is that you're not, you don't, you have interesting, even though you're keeping the, the rhythms in the beats, you know, kick snare based, you're always finding an interesting way to make that happen, which is really cool. You know, it, it's, it's so, that's like one of the kind of the, I was writing a, a thing for Rhythm Magazine about Neil Peart that's going to be coming out soon. And I, I was just writing down about how that's it. He used to compose, you know, for he, the sections, you know, he had compositions. Yeah, totally. Nice. And, and, and that's what I like <laughs> about your stuff too. It, it sounds kind of like that where, each each song has it has that kick snare groove but you're doing it in a way maybe with the hi-hat or something that's like this is the pattern for this part and then you go into this part it just it's so amazing especially one of my the favorite grooves everyone out there i know you've heard it but digital bath man nah. hey, yeah, yeah. i still can't figure out how i can't i haven't i you know i haven't sat down but when I hear that, I'm just trying to picture it in my head. I'm like, gosh, I can't, I can't, I can't figure it out yet. I mean, it's just me being a spaz. I don't think there's much, much to it, but it's definitely, it's obviously a feel thing. Of course, that's me trying to maybe be a bit of you slightly, but also what I can't be you. No one could, you know, none of oh, us can be. Man. No, I'm awesome. serious, but, and, but <laughs> oh my God, come on. But I mean, and of course, my uh, love of, um, you know, Stuart Copeland and who the fuck you can't, right? no one can be, you know, his placement was just, him growing up, you know, in the Middle East, man, and the yeah. way he heard things and, and everything was placed, you know, I mean, his, his phrasing and, and it's just amazing, but, you know, you can, anyone can, he's got his steward, stewardisms everywhere, but you can't, no one could do that. You can yeah. say, but that's all, that's the beauty of, of, um, of music, you know, and then trying to, you know, getting, getting stoked on something and being inspired by someone and running, you run it through your ears and your heart, hopefully, and make it your own. But I mean, you know, but it takes a while to, to develop your, your shit, you know what I mean? But, totally, um, totally. Yeah. And and that's the cool thing about you, you know, evolving and me too. You know, I used to, I started out just wanting to, all I could do is copy Neil Peart. I, I didn't even have not any a, idea what not I was doing copy, myself. Yeah. I just tried to imitate Neil Peart. And then, and then I started discovering Stuart Copeland and, you know, John Bonham and, and then probably those three main guys. You know, even Alex Van Halen was a big influence, actually, you know. Holy man. And, um, and what a yeah. swing he had. What a, I mean, you know, Alex was this amazing, but he, he had this, this, this amazing swing. And, it was yeah. very, and it was very big it, band like, influence. Like the Hopper teacher was like, that is a super difficult groove to play. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's insane. And I've, I've seen him live when I was a, a younger kid, man. I saw him live. I was just like, oh, my God, he is so good. Yeah. So good, it's crazy. And you listen to those recordings now. At at my age, I listen to. It, I'm like, how was he doing that? That's. Oh, dude, I I had crazy. my kids over last night. They were over for dinner, and I was just I had some wine. They were 
I was just fucking blasting until they got there. I was just rocking like Fair Warning and those. I mean, just oh man, such great records. But that record in particular is God, man. It's just in the just oh, I was just obviously Eddie had passed and stuff too. So you know, but uh, yeah, wine and good music and and this as well and. and Oh yeah, so, that's awesome, man. Thank you. But I was you, like, you like the cider? I do, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. is up in you're up in uh, is this Bellingham? Where you guys at? Is that where? Yeah, the, Washington. Or where yeah. are you in Sacramento now? Yeah, I'm in Sacramento still. You're definitely. still there. Yep. Right on. Yeah, a couple of us are here, and everyone else is kind of you know. But um. Right. I I heard uh, when I talked to Chino, he's down yeah. here in Portland, outside of Portland, right? Yeah. So he was in. He moved to like Burbank for. A, I don't know, six, seven years, maybe closer to a decade, uh, a while back. And then he uh, ended up moving to Bend um, okay. for maybe four or five years. And just, just uh, in this last last year, moved over to, like, uh, outside of Portland. Yeah. Right. So he's a Washington boy now. and uh, yeah. yeah. I know I ended up here, too, just purely by chance. Right. When my wife ended up getting a job up in Canada. But we weren't allowed to move into the country yet. And so we ended up here in Bellingham and she would just drive in. It's about 45 right. minutes, you know, so. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, the Northwest is really cool. I mean, we miss the, miss the Bay Area. Every time I'm down there in the Bay Area, I, I do miss it, you know. Yeah. A lot, no. of, a lot of cool history there. Definitely. Something about it. You know, um, it's a sea thing, I think, too. I'm a, I'm a seafaring person deep inside, so I need oh, to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm probably going to take a little, I'm going nuts here, man. I think I'm going to take a little, a little, um little cruise tomorrow to the coast and kind of just maybe yeah, if you ever, come up, ever come up north give me a shout you know okay yeah definitely definitely but um yeah i want to dang i just like you know white pony really really was a huge a huge record for you guys as well but it also you know for me just one of the fans listening it, it really had a sound that is just incredible and that's what i'm hearing on this ohms and then it's terry date again right it, it, you guys really uh you know you guys really when you work together it, you do have a really great great vibe on the records i don't know if if it it just coincidental or how involved is he in the actual like song writing like is he suggesting hey let's pull out guitars here let's do this or hey why don't you do this and so he's what's his, yeah what's his kind of role? yeah he's he's much more like i mean of course by title yeah he's a record producer he's produced some fucking amazing records you know i mean you know tons he's been he's been at it a long time but when it gets right. down to it he's really not a very hands-on uh Let's like again. Just wanted to cap let the band just capture the band the best he can, you know. Um, um, but he's his wizardry is is, is more of uh, if something's not if something's not jiving, of course, you know. I mean, his job is to keep it going. We we excel at wasting time. At least we have over the you know we're getting right. on it these days, wasting money. We, yeah, if you waste, we're here to work. You know, it should be fun. You're making a record. It's a pretty damn cool uh, thing to be able to do and. To get to it to do to do it again as well so like i think we've definitely uh figured out how to maybe it's age a bit more time on earth you know and the, not and money why why waste it you know we, for a while oh, exactly. white money, we were, we were so white money so does that kind of went in yeah sorry yeah does that mean yeah. then you guys are you guys well prepared then beforehand when you go in are you spending a lot of time rehearsing and then going in with with the songs like okay here's how they pretty much go right i mean generally I mean, uh more so now than ever you know i mean more so but i mean there's there's got to be i think there should be a little bit of room for spontaneity too and and uh, getting back to like white pony is kind of funny because that that was our third album and you know we've been around the world a bit toured had a little bit of confidence and we were really you know kind of knew what we wanted to do to, uh, this time and um there were little elements on our first records that we wanted. You could see them kind of creeping in. Um, yeah, yeah. That at the time was 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 our, I, I believe, you know, our perfect uh, example of of what we wanted to add in sonically and and and, and mix in and 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 also trying to you know design a record that coming from listening growing up on things from sixties and seventies and these great albums that you were made to be an album, you know. 
right. whether you're laying on your water bed, you know, smoking it, whatever, beer, wine, headphones, water, you know, whatever your, your thing was, but you, you, people made albums, you know what I mean? So that was always something that we tried to emulate and, and take, take, uh, take pride and, and put time into, you know, just the sequencing and, you know, the gaps between songs or, you know, and try to make it be a, hopefully a one listen thing. These days, right. it's almost different because everything, you know, but even this record was the same way, too. So it's something we kind of try to still take pride in, in making an album, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, but I think, yeah, we're more prepared this time. Uh, so you're more prepared. You go, you kind of go in with uh, the majority of the songs are kind of roughly together or. Yeah, because yeah, uh, for us, you know, for me, it's like the last thing we did was the uh the the desaturated seven you know yeah did you hear that yeah oh you did so you know less on that one had a lot of the bass lines kind of he, he had laid out some of the bass structure so basically i was playing to there was no vocals no guitars even the bass is like might change a little bit and me and him kind of I would play some stuff and he then we'd retrack his bass with my drums together. Right. But it just it just for us it's always like when I record I don't get I don't get to hear the final sound of the song. I don't know what it's really going to be like. So when I'm playing, I'm playing by myself or I mean in terms of I'm playing in my head basically. Right. I might be usually I'm playing with less. And so we have this this bass part, but there's no songs. I don't know what anything song wise is going to happen. You know, all the layers of guitars and vocals and yeah, and that you know, and the, and when those come on, you kind of get a good sense of the dynamics of the song. And so it's really hard when we do it because usually it's that procedure, and and then everything kind of gets thrown on top. And I'm and I'm a, since I'm first. And then it's like, oh, I wish I could have gone back and done it. I could do it now, now that I yeah. know what everyone's doing, you know? That's the, I think that's the drummer. That's the, the, no, not the curse of being the drummer. The drummer is the best part. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's like, yeah, I mean, in our, in our, like in our band, I, I, I get it. I mean, like, you know, especially with vocals too. I mean, yeah. Chino, Chino is always, you kind of get stoked off the music and gets inspired and vocals always came last, but he's, you have some singers writing little tidbits of every, you know, every day at the copy shop writing stuff on a, brown paper bag and I got lyrics and you know and then they're singing I mean there's melodies going on while we're jamming but it's always just jamming we're just jamming and stuff so yeah. but I mean with him you know he's maybe some melodies come along the way but of course like if I had known what he was gonna do the music's you know we're all doing it together so that's nice it's not as blind you know what I mean right but, right but fuck I mean the, the vocals are of course are the icing on the on the cake and if you if you could it's a guessing thing or a, a guessing and a, and a hoping thing you know that you and I guess that it's a blind, it's a blind thing, but it kind of, we're allowed to, well, you got to build the foundation, I guess, right? Right. So. But those, yeah, yeah, for sure. But I, I know a lot when I play live, I definitely like, I listen to the vocals a lot and I, I play to that, you yeah. know? And that's the hard part. Like, you know, it's, it's when we recorded Seize of Cheese, we actually rehearsed a bunch of this, you know, we wrote, kind of writing some of those parts and songs in a rehearsal space so um that's what i want to ask you sorry to cut you off but that yeah were you guys at like like a winter or not winter like or was it the old dead was it the dead's place or something like that or oh warehouse that, you guys were at? no we uh so our our sound man derek featherstone he uh his sound company was the sound company for the dead so they okay. did the grateful dead live and they still do. They still do the. They. Uh, he's. He's got with all the, all the big group like Dave Matthews, um, the current Dead setup. You know, their sound company is doing it. Okay. And um, ultrasound and. So, back in the pork soda was the one where, there were these warehouses in San Rafael. Okay. And they were basically like storage warehouses and then it, and i think less i think less had a one of the offices upstairs was like their design he had like a design 
thing going on, like an office up there. Right. But they were also in those warehouses with stored equipment and ultrasound had all their stuff stored there. Okay. So it was kind of interesting. We took, um, there were three warehouses and the big one had the cons a live console that Derek would use for mixing live sound. We used that to track. Right. Um, because it was it was you know really really good quality stuff and yeah. ultrasound they did a lot of their they did a lot of the work on repairing them and keeping them sounding the best they could you know right. and so they had a really great console they have um, and so we we just kind of set up this environment to like a live sound basically right I and then they ran snakes all the way into the other warehouses and i was i think i was two warehouses over Yay, yeah and yeah. i had my drums sitting there yeah and there was no it couldn't see anybody else yeah and then larry was in the warehouse in here in a room and then les was in the room where the console was okay. he was back in a, a area so that's how we tracked it was weirdly separated and we actually did that on um the very first ADATs that came right. out. <laughs> it was the, yeah, it was the new. It, it, yeah, I mean, it had a, it, you listen to it now, I'm like, oh my God, you know? I mean, there's there's definitely nothing like two inch tape, I gotta say, right. it just, it's just always, always the best. You know, when you got, when you got some people who know how to make it sound right. Oh, yeah, no, it's, yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, that's what, it yours? was soda, so that's what it was. I was trying to remember. I there was all this lore going around, and, and little you know, I, you know, I heard they did it in the way, you know, all this. So uh, yeah. everyone chattering and yeah, it was pretty funny. yeah, okay. totally. But you know, C's achieve. That's that's where it really started turning into our home recordings. We right. just we just kind of whatever the you know record company advance was. We just took the money and then you know we bought gear to record our own stuff, and then that way we have the gear. You know, I mean so. It sounds like it's the perfect way to do it. I mean, you know, you have you, money's here. I mean, yeah. you know, let's let's do something good with it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was it was interesting for sure. Right. And that that's kind of the sound of the albums from Pork Soda on were kind of like that. The ones that I was involved in, right, right. But um, yeah, the first three, our first one was done on an eight track with our uh, Matt Weiniger, uh, friend Matt Weiniger, and yeah, at the Berkeley Square. Oh yeah, it was a Tascam eight track. It was interesting, you know. Oh, it sounded really good, though. You that know, record that, sounds. That, that's that tape that's sound. what got me hooked. That record got me hooked. That that record sounds so damn good. And the Berkeley, what the square was, what a, what a great spot that was. I remember one time we were playing there, and I, there, someone's, oh, I think, yo, Tim's here, man. Tim's in the crowd somewhere. I, I was like, oh shit. I was like, I was like, I was like 19 <laughs> years old. I was like, I, I just went like my. I was like, oh man, come yeah. on. <laughs> and I know, yeah, no, I'm serious. And then after you know we were we were done, I was like, man, I was looking for him, but. Or, yeah, he was here. He took off, though. I was like, oh, well, you know, at least he was there. So <laughs> at the old Berkeley Square. Oh, man, I have no idea what happened. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't. It ain't no thing. But yeah, then then Frizzle Fry was two inch. Uh, Seize the Cheese was two inch. OK. And then after that, it was all, you know, it, it went. Uh, like I said, we did pork soda on ADATs. And then we did the Tales from the Punch Bowl. Um, I think those were ADATs as well. Right. And, but they were, I I think, yeah, gosh, I really do think they were ADATs, but Les, Les had a big old API console, I think at that point. Nice. So, yeah, we, so, you know, it was home recording, but yeah, and investing in gear and, and he had, he had a two inch machine. I'm not sure if we tracked the drums on, I don't remember really, okay. but yeah, but for your stuff, man, it was was Ohms on tape? No, uh, so Ohms again. I mean, yeah, we were in this kill. You know, A and M, A and M still. I mean, it's it's such a shame because all these great spots. You know, the way the business is these days, and all these great great rooms with all this history and killer gear. Yeah. You know, they're they're the ones that can survive are, and they've they've adapted or they've stayed the same. Of course, with some slight modifications. You know what I mean? So right. But that's one one thing about the uh, about the Henson, which is you know the old A and M. Um, there's uh, I think there's four there's four tracking rooms there and and then maybe a mixed room too so but it's still one of those great 
you know, the, the tech room is like the size of, I mean, it's just amazing, you know, so there's a full, you know, these people are all this great old, old great gear, classic, you know, that killer gear and people maintaining it. And um, so, yeah, that was long story short. That was, that was, uh, that was in studio B there. Um, it was all, it was all to, it was all to, to pro tools, but, um, but wow, he yeah, did a real, it, yeah, he did a really great, got a really great uh, depth right from from the pro tools i mean it definitely a lot of it, it's like it's weird i i it just feels like i can tell when it's digital you know it just yeah. it's a it it doesn't ha yeah the thickness in the way like the drums hit but man this this album really yeah you can't tell it definitely right. has has some warmth no i mean and i think a lot of that for a while back in a couple of albums we were we were right when that whole transition was happening we were we would track the Pro Tools, but bounce the bass and drums back to two inch. And then to get that warmth and that saturation, you know, well, especially with the low end um, and then back into Pro Tools. But I think, you know, it's gotten, things have gotten a lot better, but it's still, there's that, if it's, if it's not done proper, you can, you can still get that, you know, like the highs, the cymbals too. But um, so this, yeah, this last, this last album was all, um, was all, I think it was like a nice SSL console and, um, all there, but we actually uh, went to mix it. We mix it up at uh, up in wooden. So Terry's from uh, he's up in Seattle. So uh, oh, Terry Day. Yeah, yeah, he's out in Woodenville. So no shit, really. Yeah. And we would always record. We we did our first four albums. Ah, uh, no, we did our first two, three. Up there a little bit back and forth too, but yeah, we did always would work up there, uh, the old Studio X and and Studio Litho. Uh, Stone Gossard's place over in, in Fremont. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I got to, you guys recorded there. Yeah, we did our second record there. The great old API console and. Yeah, I got to go there, and I did a thing with uh, an all instrumental thing with Scaric. You know Scaric. Mm -hmm. So we have a thing called the. Uh, well, it's with Scaric. He's a saxophone player. Okay. Plays with a ton of people, and uh, we have this thing coming out. Uh, eventually god has been done for you but it was all it, it was all improv right. it's kind of uh we have this guy tim mason who does a lot of this just programming old synth stuff and so me him and scarrick just putting this stuff together right so yeah it's really uh but we did it at litho because he's good buddies with those guys yeah that was a nice cool. room man oh so just a comfy room great i love fremont over there it's so cool and yeah uh, yeah, I mean, just a great spot. But yeah, so we ended up mixing up there. His, he just, uh, we would always work at uh, Studio X and the old Bad Animals that was up there. Um, and the Heart Sisters had it for a while. It was the old K Smith, I think, before, like from the 70s. A bunch of like, I mean, all these great records, all the, the uh, like all the Heart stuff was there early on and um, Steve Miller band, you know, but just tons. I mean, you know, it was great old spots up there. But, yeah. um, but Terry, yeah, Terry's out in Woodenville and we ended up, uh, he actually built, um a nice comfy little spot mainly for mixing you could probably do a little you can get away with doing some overdubs and there's a vocal room uh, you could definitely set up a drum set down in the garage you know and, and if you had to but uh but he's and he bought he bought uh this uh, lovely neve there's these brand new neves that are out that uh that uh it's basically rupert's final he's like it's all back you know and so he bought one of these things so we ended up mixing up there uh, at, at his house and this you know a little bit of combo of that, but yeah, just being That's back up cool. there was was the best, you know. Mellow, no bullshit, no, uh, no, none of that. The distra well, the distra I don't think there's distractions for us anymore down in LA, but there was a time when there was, you know. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but. Uh, do you guys? Do you guys? So do you guys all show up and get there for mixing every day, or do you kind of let him put it together and then you go in and listen and then make your notes and. <laughs> We do. I have a good story. So our first record, we were we we did it at uh, Bad Animals, which was Bad Animals was still the two old API rooms from the 70s, uh, A and B. And then the Heart Sisters had bought the the facility. And, and uh, do you remember Studio X at all? Nope. So it was a the more it was a modern uh, SSL room. So they had you know a huge SSL, and it was this huge complex. They had Bill Nye, the science guy, was upstairs doing stuff, and we, you know, like, well, man, that's Bill Nye over there, and 
just it was awesome. So, but we did that there. And um, what was my point? Uh, I was asking about the mixing. Do you guys hang out there? There or do you, you let do you let Terry kind of do it and then you show up and it's the ciders? It. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, so uh, uh, now we do, yes, definitely. But it's funny, like the first record, Terry had we were so hyped, we were you know, we were we were 20 and oh, yeah, yeah, we were stoked, you know, we're in a, we're we're also nervous as hell. We're in a, you know, we're we're actually like a, we're we're signed to a real label, we're in a real studio with a real you know, all this real shit, whatever that means, you know what I mean? So, oh. came time to mix it and we're like. We were just all, yeah, man. Everyone's kind of jockeying for bitch and trying to trying to push up faders and push oh, yeah. up, you know. So finally, <laughs> he's like, "Look, guys." He actually took a bunch of like he put some uh, some gaff tape and made like a penalty box around. He's like, "Just fucking, you can be in here." And we were like, everyone's you know slipping a twenty dollar bill. Hey, man, let me try to get over there. And then after that, he's like, "Look, man." Next record, he's like, "Guys, just fucking get out. Let go drink a cup of coffee, get a beer, do what you need to do." Let me get going for a couple hours. Come in, and we'll talk. Yeah, about it. yeah. So Which this, is the way it should be done. Let them, let them, let them get started. You know, but yeah, um, this is that took that took us years to learn too. Oh, it's a it's part of the process, man. And trusting, like when we were young, I mean, we used to we used there used to be a little tension because it would be, I I you know from the beginning, like, oh that doesn't that drum doesn't sound good. Oh let's turn it, and he's like, yeah. he hasn't even got the he hasn't even got like tracks up for everything yet. And right. It I'm, took, I'm not it, there yet. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, so it took a long time. And just so people know that it's like it, uh, the recording process, you know, once you lay down all your, the music and instruments, each instrument has its own channel on this big giant console. And so that's when you have make every individual instrument sound the way it does, because right. it doesn't sound great just when you just record them. You know, they, they need EQs and it's a, it's an art. It's a major oh, art yeah. in making things sound good and the way they, they work together. It's a total art form. Yeah. And so just so people know, like when we're young, we're in there and we want to, oh, it doesn't sound right. Right from the get go is like, it took us years to learn, let the guy there set everything up, get the sounds and knowing that. Right. You know, in a day or two, you can go in and go, all right, the snare sounds too brittle, the kick drum's yeah. not fat enough, or enough bass, or enough punch, or tick, yeah. or all that kind of stuff. Like, hey, young blood, take a hike. Let me get it. Yeah, yeah. Give me, give me a second here. You have so. to tell the band, get out. Yeah. Let me let me get a rough thing going so that you guys can come listen to it. And then, yeah, then we'll take yeah. it from there. We'll go from there, you know? Yeah, then you take it and try to make it sound good. So it's yeah. the same for you guys there. Man. Oh my, it's, 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 it's well, hilarious. Someone, it's, yeah. someone like him, you can definitely go, all right, set your levels, make it sound cool. And then, then you can discuss all the dynamics totally. stuff, right? And once, once we learn to relax and give them the space and then you know, the trust is built and we already yeah. knew we were in good hands, we, we, you know, fabulous hands anyways. So right. it's, just, it's just that, that uh, youthful exuberance, man. You know, oh man. So how much, how much did he have done? How much did uh, he have done before you um, uh, you guys showed up and were like, okay, let's let's fix this, this, and this, you know? Right. So, uh, like, talking about this this album here, yeah, yeah. So interesting enough, Tim, we we actually we tracked we we tracked everything uh, June Julyish of last year uh, down in L.A. at the, okay. at Henson. Uh, took a, took a little time off and then moved everything up to Seattle or up to Woodenville up there um, to his spot and. They did uh, vocals and, you know, little overdubs, last little icing, little tinkles and shit here and there, um, some, some keys and stuff, some synths and what whatnot. And then that's, yeah. when, that's actually when, when, uh, when COVID hit. So we weren't, so the mixing was all done via this and files. So, oh, so just send, sending mixes and you make notes and then he yeah. does it and he just works on yeah. it. Yeah, due, due to that, you know, due to, due that's, to that's COVID. That's how it is now. Yeah. yeah, that's how it's been for a long time since the digital age. You know, you right. can just but we were all, we, we were all hyped to be there. We we're like we were like, yo, can wait. So he's probably stoked. Like, oh fuck, these guys are, they're you know they're not here. This is great. I can do it. so. And right. it, you know, it took a little long. It's better when you're able to give them this time and then, you know, go in and you can knock things out when we're all there. Like, hey man, this and that. But this was like waiting for people to respond to emails and, you know, but um, it worked out well. So you know, it is it is what it is. But we basically got through all this, this COVID shit. Uh, up until the, the mixing part so wow 
Yeah. So you tracked you tracked it. God, last year, yeah. Yeah. Kind over a, over a year ago, then, huh? Yeah. Wild man. Yeah. So now, so well, then now, what's what's going to go on? Um, since we're in COVID, what are you are you guys doing anything that we can look out for? Or are you just going to kind of wait it out and get out and play live? We were hoping hoping to wait it out. You know what I mean? And that's still the hope. I, I we were actually we were ready to go. We were going to head down to Australia, New Zealand to start um, to start this cycle. Oh, which true. The last time I saw you in person when we were down there on the Big D out. Oh, that's well, right. That, yeah. That's right. Yeah, man. Um, but then that didn't happen. I think we were like about eight hours away from leaving, and I was like, I was like, I think, I think we got it, guys. I think we're, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be able to leave. And then we got the call. So um, bags are still packed from that about eight, seven months ago. So I'm, I'm waiting to go. I'm ready. Oh, you guys but, were um, that close? Oh yeah, we're like, I think, I think we could, you know, because down there was kind of cool, so it wasn't as bad. But that's before right. it really took off. So. But yeah, I mean, everyone's doing a lot of streaming things, which is amazing. It's pretty neat. Are you neat. guys going to do any of that? I don't know. I mean, I, I, there's talk now. I would prefer just to wait until we could just do it right. And But I mean, you can't, got to adapt, you know, got to adapt and improve. And these are definitely uh, trippy times, man. So there's some little bit of discussion going on right now, but I would just love to be able to, well, in a perfect world, get back to it. But uh, yeah, but who knows when that'll be. So kind of hanging, but there's, yeah. I know, man. It's it's really weird. We, gosh, I think it was two years ago. We were planning on, um, we were planning on doing the rush. This rush, yeah, kind of, not a tribute, but we were just going to do farewell to Kings live. I remember, yeah. And then I forget what reason they just decided. Well, we should wait, and we'll do it next summer i don't know it kept getting pushed and pushed and then january this year and then neil dies and it was like oh shit you know and then we were supposed to go in summer we were supposed to be out touring this so we we're it's been two years now we've been waiting right. to go out and and do the farewell to kings and now we're waiting another year yeah. And I, I was, you know, I was learning it and working on it. I mean, I used to know that stuff inside and out, but it's, yeah. it's been a while. So now I'm, I'm back. I got my, got my little, my drums sitting here. Thick. And uh, so, yeah, I was like, oops, losing my stand. Um, yeah, I was working on that, man. And just like, God dang it. We're just postponed and postponed. Yeah. And now we, don't, we don't have anything planned right now. You know, we're just kind of, I don't know. I'm waiting to hear. Yeah. I'm usually waiting, waiting around. Hey, I, yeah. I mean, man, I've just been trying to keep moving, trying to keep active and keep happy. been playing a bit here and there too, but, uh, you know, I was hyped and ready to go. And I yeah. guess there's a lot of things I could be, you know, maybe learning, relearning back catalog and getting that kind of, you know, getting the old noodle. Keeping yeah. Noodle. Has, has COVID and I mean, all this kind of, being i don't know it, it's had a weird effect on me you know i'm like it, it just i i was working on stuff and then i slowly just all the i guess all the pressures of like schooling we i've got an eight-year-old or nine-year-old daughter now you know dealing with school and dealing with like well we can't tour you know we're not you know and that's how most bands make a living Definitely. And I've got the cider business, you know, and that's that's hard during this time as well. The growth is kind of everything's on pause. So it's been pretty stressful. And I kind of been in like a creative hole right now. Just, you know, writer's block. Kind uh, of hey, I, 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 I hear you, man. I'm, I'm right there with you, you know. Really? Yeah, no, totally. I mean, and thankfully, it's kind of funny because it's as weird as it. No, fully. I mean, just like. I want to play and I'm, you know, I mean, and just I'm just in a. Actually, I'm I'm happy now. Past couple of weeks, but uh, you know, you know, but I, I yeah, it's like it's it's a trip, man, and and just trying to keep active. How is how is homeschool? Is, is she? You're, it's all Zoom stuff, right? I mean, for your daughter. Or no, that... with our school right now, it's it's mainly just uh, you know handouts from school, and then okay. we we work here at the house, try to get her. Yeah, get her. Like, you know, get my kids are stuff. like my kids are doing like uh, I've well I have one son my i have two sons one's uh in his last year of college and oh wow that is, that is what it that is but my my uh, youngest son is a senior in high school 
you know, and, and high school is high school, whatever, but it's still like, you know, that's your, that's your senior year. It's a, it's a, it's a monumental thing in one's it's life. Different. Generally. It's yeah, a generally, different time you know. now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, <laughs> it's funny today. I, I, I took him to get his, uh, he needed to get his car serviced. And I was like, he could have, I had to pay for something on it. So I went, I was like, dude, you, you should take your car in. You, you're 17. You can, you know, but I was like, wait, aren't you supposed to be in school? He's like, yeah, I have one zoom class today. Um, so I, we, we had a couple hours to kill so we went and got a little bite to eat and uh and it's so funny because he was he was on a zoom while we were at this restaurant out sitting out in the patio but um it was a government really? class yeah he was like yeah what? i got i have one class it was government and it was kind of funny it made me remember um government class in senior year was a for me was like a, we had this rad teacher who who it was you could kind of like he allowed people to be free and and you know you're old enough to, to talk shit and talk about you know, we we could cuss in class, and we could challenge them with our with our thoughts, and it was the same thing. So I, the, the guy was talking about all these crazy cases, and you know, Roe versus Wade, and what's going on now, and murder, and and all these you know different like uh, right you know, mandatory sentences, and they started talking about ecstasy. I'm like shit, you know, like drug drug charges, and I'm like, whoa, man, that's but high school the, now. The funny the funny part was I never I was like son, I never thought I'd be sitting with you in in government class in high school. So yeah, it's kind of wild, but uh. That's wild. Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't have that when I was, I was in the 70s. What was I? Yeah. I graduated. 80, so late 70s. Yeah. Late 70s. I didn't have a government class. I think we had like history and that was it. <laughs> history. And you, uh, you grew up, uh, were you from the, one of the Carolinas? You no, no, no. I mainly Michigan. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, is where I did most of my schooling did my last year in high school in phoenix okay. I, I moved there my last year so i just did half of half of a half a day of senior year just to get out i didn't know anybody i just kind of rode my bike down there and picked up my diploma yeah. and left Want to get out? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting out man yeah it was weird it was weird we moved yeah but oh my we got a bunch of buddies from michigan on here watching they're all fans of you guys killer man i see them yeah so What's up y'all I know, man. Well, I'm so glad you uh, got on here. We finally, we've been talking about it for a little while and it's been t hard to make the timing work. Yeah, no, I, I dude, this is, it's easy peasy and fun. And I, I could go for another five hours if you want it, but I mean, it, it's just, uh, well, we got, uh, yeah, we got, so we got, we got time. I mean, we could, we got uh, all about 10 minutes left. So there's a lot of people have mentioned some things. If anyone's got some questions, you can keep an eye on them here. We got just so anyone who's maybe popped in, Abe Cunningham, Cunningham from uh, Deftones is here right now. And uh, let's see anybody. Much love. All right. <laughs> hearts. Hearts. Yes. Well, if you guys got a question, throw it up here. We got like 10 minutes. Um, and, you know, this will be on Instagram TV as well so people can watch it. Cool. We also, I, I'm trying to get the YouTube channel up just so I can post it up there. So, um, working on that, getting that going and stuff. Oh, here's one. What was the first song written on Ohms? Ooh. Do you remember? No. <laughs> it might have been, it might have been Genesis. That's a great. And it might have been, it might have been what is now Ceremony. You know what? No, I do. It was, it was what is now called Ceremony. I'm so, we have like working titles and then halfway through right. the process there's we, there's another working title for this so there's usually three phases of working and everyone's like what the fuck what song was it man you know and then of course the actual titles ceremony uh i think was the first song yeah i remember when i heard it i texted you and chino and i said guys the the spell of mathematics right right now that one i just oh it's so amazing you know what's and funny? Then you were like, you were like, oh wait, the one with the snaps. <laughs> and I was like, that's a snap song. He doesn't even know what it's called. <laughs> you know, so you know what's funny about that? Just uh, since we we're sitting here talking about all kinds of things, but that's yeah, an yeah. interesting one, be because of well, the snaps for one, but also, so I, I set up two kits, and this, this time around, just you know, had a little, we had the main kit set up, and then we, I had another little, just a small little five piece, in a corner, uh, with the old, Bonham style, the. Uh, Let's see. Uh, what's his oh, name? so you do that? You'll have two kits in the room? Well, this time we did. Yeah, we had we had enough room. It was pretty tight in there, but um, 
Just, why? Just for different sounds? Yeah, maybe you know something just to go back and forth. Okay. We ended up tracking everything on on one kit, but also um, so that that song, Soul of Mathematics, um, yeah. was we Terry's like, hey, go check that other you know go check that other kit out real quick and see what's up. And uh, I was like, yeah. So I was just jamming, and then Sergio, our bass player, came in, and that just popped out of a jam. Uh, right and, then in the studio. Yeah. Oh my okay. God, that's like that's like one of the top songs on this album for me. Yeah, it's a trip, man. It's very spacious and it's got a lot of room. So good. But the snaps, the snaps are pretty cool too. The snaps came really cool. done, and we're like, shit. You know, uh, our buddy uh, from Sacco, Zach Hill, a drummer, amazing. Oh, Zach. Killer drummer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Zach. Zach was, he, he was living down there. He's like, yeah, I live a couple blocks from the studio. I want to meet up for a beer. So we all just got the hell out for a minute and uh, went, went, took a little stroll up the street, met him. A beer turned into four or five and we're like, shit, come back to the studio. Let's go kick it. Right. And then we just ended up, Terry's like, let's do something. So we just went out there and we did, it was our little, uh, our barbershop quartet. It wasn't necessarily three or four part harmonies, but we all sat out there and snapped together. So Zach's on the, Zach is one of these snaps. Kind of cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Why? What made you guys think snaps? I think just there was so much space, and uh, we were sitting there listening in, in the cans, and Terry just threw up a nice verb, and you know, just a just a standard kind of verb, and it just like it just had that. You know, everything so sounds great. You were just thinking, let's add something to this, and you didn't know what was going to happen. Yeah, we were going to toss some shit around, or we were going to go and just whistle, or just we were we we just came back from the bar, so you know, we're like, you know. And so and what happened? One of you snapped or all we of started, you? We started snapping, man. You know? Really? And, uh, yeah. And then so we got, we, it was me, it was Chino, myself, uh, Frank, Sergio, and I think, uh, and Zach, and they were just started snapping. That, that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> it works. It's yeah. really cool. It works. Definitely. It sounds really cool. Um, let's see. So, hey, I see this one. How did you come up with the beginning of Shove It? Shove It, Shove It. That's a good one. So here we are. All right, check it out. Sh shove it, and the song "Lady," I believe, it goes right into the next song after that. I do believe I might be tripping, but we were up in, at Litho uh, recording that record. We had most, we had pretty much everything written um, for say maybe like I don't know. We had three quarters of the album written. At that point, we're like, let's try to use the studio as a bit of a laboratory if we could. You know, later right. we, we later found that could either go two ways. It could be amazing or it could be incredibly expensive and waste of time but right but uh so anyways uh i think chino was either get, uh, was getting he was having a baby i think so he he left for a couple of days to go be there for the birth of his, his son and uh stefan and i were just we didn't you know terry's like we got we need more we need some more songs guys you know we need we need some shit uh stop fucking around get you know, go do cause we, were, we were just like we're waiting until the guys get back we're gonna jam and all you know we're on top of the world everything's great and uh, he's like, no, dude, both of you, Stefan and Abe, get the, go get the fuck in the, go, go do something. And uh, I remember we did take a, a big old bong rip. And uh, I, was really, <laughs> I, was, I was very relaxed and uh, had the cans on. And I, you know, I had Terry put a little bit of uh, just the rooms in there. So you, you think you're bottom, you know, when you're, everything sounds great in the cans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice totally. room and compressed and like, and I was, I just went, it's the world's simplest, simplest intro, but I just went boom, bop, and then we were just off and running. Just it was just Stefan and I. Oh right, and, uh, I'm sorry. I'm I'm looking it up here. I wanted to play it real quick to hear hear what that is. Just so yeah, it's oh, up around the fur. Uh, it's it's called, on around the fur. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. My own summer. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that one. Yeah, that one. Oh yeah, yeah. It's when just, it's just boom, bop. boom, bop, boom, bop. Yeah. Oh, dude. That is such a great, yeah. Great you know, oh, you know what? Nice though, you question. Know, you know what it is? There's more to it. I'll be, I'll be brief. I'm, I'm, I'm sipping on cider now. Go so ahead. I'm, no, I like it. We, it just Instagram will cut us off here. Okay. Six well, minutes. this is real so, quick. That yeah. is a straight rip of um, Easy Lover. Philip Bailey and Phil Collins. Boom ba, boom ba, ba ba. Oh right, right, right. Don't clap. Don't clap. That's right. With Phil, with, with Phil Collins playing drums. Yep, Phil and uh, and uh, Philip Bailey. Yeah, Philip Bailey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, so, they did. He. Yeah, that's right. And that's all that. I mean, that's subconsciously. That's 
just that's a, you play an easy lover <laughs> just yeah and really high and just like just so oh. everybody knows man when you listen to it think of easy lover <laughs> yeah, think of phil collins baby yeah phil collins oh man i know i wish i could get that sound you know that's what i've since 90 1995 i've have all single headed drums you know that's what yeah. i use now so, well, so, well tim sawyer Soya's my buddy as well. Soya's on here. I saw yeah. him pop in. Where you at, Soya? You up in the mountains? Yeah, he's up there. Yep. Yeah. yeah what saying, about it? No, he was just saying you uh, when, when you we, when you got the 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 brown kit, the chocolate kit, right. and everything was uh you know he was sending me a picture of you guys you know I was like oh my god look at it yeah. Yeah, it sounds great. I I, I like it. I just I just uh, it would be awesome to get that Phil Collins vibe someday. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's, yeah. there's nothing like it, man. And, and gosh, it's so cool. And, well, actually, you know, it's, it's also the Peter Gabriel vibe on like security and totally. the melting face that totally, no. just, I, I love the, the rhythms and not so much playing, playing beats, but playing yeah. rhythms. Totally. Know? And very, uh, Jerry Murata kind of like all the, the Murata brothers and like that kind of, that kind of, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. totally. I I, I, just, I really dig that stuff as well. But you know, I just, yeah. And then just everyone, yeah, we've got four minutes. I just check out Ohms. Uh, so you guys are still on your record label, right? Yeah, we're on. Uh, the yeah, we're still, yeah, it's Reprise now. It's Warner 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 Brothers. We're, it still is okay. But I think we're on Reprise. There's either you Sire. Yeah, we're, it's Reprise Records, which is crazy. Was it? Was it? pretty expensive i mean nowadays the recording in a studio and, and mixing with terry like you know are these guys do these guys like have reduced costs now just to there's adjustments you know, for real yeah, for sure there's, there's adjustments uh no the studio was got a, they got a great rate um and they're one of the, those last active fully you know staffed studios in LA. i mean there's they're there they're there but Right. Uh, they got a great, great rate. Terry is always his family, so he gave us a family, a friend price, you know. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but and and just being prepared, you can you save a lot of dough. And, and, right. And right. No click tracks on this record either. All oh yeah, live, I was going to ask all, you about that. No clicks. Yeah. You did all that just straight up, huh? Terry's like, how do you guys want to record this? I'm like, well, you know, we the last few records we've done to stripes and oh, really? attitudes, attitudes, and the bands were like, you know fucking drummer aren't you get did you get your take yet i'm like no i'm working on it so <laughs> but terry we got we got back with terry and he's like how do you want to do this you want to i know you guys have done it you know past few records um he's like i you want to do it the old way i was like well maybe you know maybe we'll see how everybody's attitudes are and then right. uh lo and behold we went and did it uh all together everything live the entire record uh with no clicks man it, it's like, well <laughs> I was like, whoa, man, all right, we can do yeah, that. Yeah, after, after band again. this many years of playing, man, I, you know, it should help, you should have a pretty steady clock now. But it was, it, it definitely gave uh, just a, a realization that we could, it made, it's a confidence builder, like, whoa, we can, we can rely on our training and we can, we're a band, we can go do this as, as buddies and friends and, right, and knock it out. And it was quick and uh, it was almost too quick, but, right. Yeah. Well, no, man, it, it it's amazing. I, I see a lot of people have listen, been listening to it. It's really, really great, man. And your playing is amazing, for yeah. sure. And I like, I like, I do like the kind of simplicity in it too. You know, yeah. there's there's not not a lot of craziness. It's a pretty just. It's not really a drum record. There's maybe a part here and there, but it's it's a. It's musical. Just trying to for the song man play the play song. what's needed yeah, yeah that's what i'm talking about like that simplicity it's it's perfect right and it and it, it leaves room for other stuff you know like for the because when when mixing an album like this man you got to have those guitars out there and the, the drums got to be you, you got to leave space for everything yeah no. otherwise it can it, it turn too heavy metal where everything's just you know you can't get clarity on what what the guitar is doing, you know, just struggling to hear what they're doing. And right. So, sure. no, great job. And thanks yeah. for coming on, man. Dude, my pleasure. You are, thanks for having you are, me. Man. You are amazing. I love it. Well, love your band. I love, I love you, man. I love your band too. <laughs> Back at you. Dude, thank All you right. so much, man. Well, everybody, thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if you missed this or came in halfway, whatever, I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Look up Herb's 
happy hour. And uh, Abe, I hope everything's cool. You guys stay safe. Yeah, get some cider, herbcider.com. Drink some cider. You can go on yeah. there, order, delivered straight to your house. Thanks, dude. Let's talk dude. soon, all right? Definitely. Much love, brother.